Hello everyone. In this tutorial, what I'm going to be covering is the PHP syntax. And if you have any experience in other languages, you know that there are a set of rules that you must follow in order to even start coding, right? And PHP has the same set of rules, just coded a different way. So if syntax, the term is a little fuzzy for you, basically it's just a set of rules that must be followed in order to write properly structured code. So with that being said, it doesn't even matter that I'm using an Apple machine or Apple text editor here to demonstrate how to write PHP code. If you're using a PC, if we use if we use the same syntax, it doesn't matter when we upload our files to the server because the server is going to read the syntax. And if it's the same, it's going to execute that file just the same. So for PHP, like I said, we have special delimiters that we must write in order to create this PHP scripting block. But I have used this in my previous tutorials as well. But for PHP, it just starts off with a less than sign, then a question mark, then PHP. And then it ends with a question mark and a greater than sign. So anything that we want to write in here for PHP, we just write inside this PHP scripting block. So this form or this, uh, I guess you can say uh, PHP scripting block form is called just a standard form. So I'm just going to write standard form up here and I'm going to put this in a HTML comment. All right. So this is a standard form and we also have another form that we can use, but I don't recommend this and it's just the shorthand. Yeah. Shorthand form if I can spell correctly. All right, and it starts off with a less than, then a question mark, and it ends with a question mark and a greater than sign. So for the shorthand, the reason I don't recommend it is because if the server that you're uploading your script to doesn't have the shorthand method enabled, then your PHP code isn't going to execute. So for safety reasons and for compatibility with all servers that have PHP enabled, you want to use the standard form. So in a way, if you're curious about how can this tie in with HTML, you know, how can I write some PHP code and have HTML code as well? So it's quite simple. So let's just start our HTML like we normally would. All right, so we have our body and then we will end with slash body slash HTML. Now, I again, assume you have some HTML knowledge. So I'm not going to go into all of this, but in a way for HTML, we could easily just write hello, Robert right here. And we know that it'll display in the browser just fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this file. And since our file is going to have PHP code included, we need to end with a .php extension. So I'm just going to call this syntax.php. All right, and I'm going to load this up in my browser real quick. So we're going to go to localhost slash, it's in my the PHP basics folder slash and syntax php all right so it says hello robert just fine now let's say we type just hello robert inside the php scripting block what happened i'm gonna reload we get this error message and it says look at line 11. so with php it, it, it's a different language right so it's going to have a different set of rules if you want to display something to the browser or just so the server can actually send that data to the browser so as I've done in some of my previous tutorials, I had this echo instruction and I ended it with a semicolon. So I'm going to save that, load it up again, see if this error goes away. And it does. So we have two Hello Roberts. And so you can distinguish one from the other. I'm going to say Hello Robert 1 and Hello Robert 2. All right. 
So as I stated earlier, since our file here, our source file has PHP code included, we have to save it with a .php extension. But let's say I save it as by mistake as a .html. Let's see what happens. So let's change this in our browser to HTML. And as you see, it only says hello, Robert one. It doesn't even recognize this block of PHP code. So that's very important. If you, you know, that's one of the things to check if something's not working correctly, make sure you're saving it with the right extension. So going back here, let's go ahead and save it back as the PHP version. All right. Now let's, as you can see here, I have this instruction ended with a semicolon, right? And all that semicolon really does is let us know that that instruction has ended. That's all we want to do for this instruction here. So I'm going to come down here and I want to do another example just with a semicolons. All right, and I'm going to create another PHP scripting block. And as you can see already, I can have as many PHP scripting blocks as I wish, but you don't have to do this. So I'm going to say echo. Hello, YouTubers. I'm going to say echo. Hello, Robert. I'm going to say echo. Hello, world. And let's say, let's say echo. What are you doing? I'm going to say echo. We are learning some PHP. All right, so each one of these instructions are separated by a semicolon. So if I go back in my browser, refresh, as you can see, it displays everything like it should. Of course, we need to format it a little bit so it's spaced out some, but I'm not gonna get into that in this video. Just wanna get into the syntax. So the next example that I wanna give here is a white space example. So let's change this here. And you don't have to write all these comments. I just want to have something for you to easily reference if you are looking for a certain example. Uh, you know what? I've been spelling example wrong this whole time. But that's all right. All right. So anyway, we're going to start another PHP scripting block here. And I'm just going to copy this here. All right, so for the white space, as with HTML, white space is ignored with PHP as well. So what I'm meaning by that, if I just put in here, like say four gaps here or seven gaps or whatever, and I put maybe two gaps here and I put another gap there, you know, and I leave these two in contact like that and I save it, reload or refresh the page. As you can see, it didn't really affect, it didn't have, we are learning some PHP all the way down here. You know, if you want to actually have a gap like this there, you can use some HTML, which again, we'll get into later on. So I just wanted to point out that white space is ignored with PHP, just as it is with HTML. So as I was mentioning before, before I end this tutorial, we can have all of this PHP code in the same PHP scripting block. So let's say, okay, this is our ending mark, the question mark greater than. So if I take this out, take out that comment, I'm going to take this out because we already have an ending delimiter. So take that out, take this PHP starting delimiter out, take that out and take this out, take that out. So as you can see, we have our starting delimiter here, less than question mark PHP. Then down here, we have a question mark greater than. So we're good and it should work just fine. So I'm going to hit save, reload it, see what happens. All right. So we're still good to go. Everything looks fine. So as you can see, you don't have to have, you know, five different PHP scripting blocks to make this work. But you can if you want to. It's perfectly legal, but you don't have to. So anyway, that does conclude this tutorial. Be sure to take the quiz online at the phpbasics.com to make sure you understand the PHP syntax. And I will see you in the next video.